just want to say, thus so far, I have really enjoyed the service on, on your annual um, youth day. The choir did an awesome job in the middle of it. And hang on, it just really blessed me. So if you don't mind, just give them a hand. They did an awesome job. I want to, um, while I'm up here, um, honor um, Pastor Royster um, for, for allowing me to, to occupy this space to, to, to bring a word um, to your young people uh, this morning. So just thank you for allowing me um, to hang out with you guys. Um, Ms. Janice Hardy, um, thank you for your professionalism and just reaching out and all of your hospitality. It means a lot and all of your kindness. Also, um, shout out to Pastor Hodges. Um, I'm not sure if he's here, but um, we'll be bringing the word um, this afternoon at 3 o'clock. I pray that um, he, he blesses you guys. Um, I bring you greetings from Hightown Church of God, like right up the street, right around the corner. Um, pastor Marvin Cherry, that's my pastor. Um, so I um, want to honor him and, and his, his wife, Candace, our first lady. Um, thank my mom um, over there in the gray, um, Dorothy Mitchell, um, for coming. Um, she was one of the ministers. I looked up and I saw my aunt uh, Brenda Williams um, here um, visiting um, with with us. If you need um, Mary Kay, that's the lady uh, to go to. She can she can hook your face up and get your skin looking good. So so that's that's your go-to lady for Mary Kay. Um, so thank you for coming out um, here. And um, last but not least, I just want to um, honor my wife, um, Minister Tynell Mitchell. We serve as youth pastors at High Town Church of God. Um, she's not here with me today. She She's there holding it down and, and, and teaching our youth um, there. So I just want to um, honor her and, and, and thank God for, for her um, praying for me, um, even while, while she's there. Um, so let's go ahead and, and get started. We're going to pray. Um, God in heaven, Jesus, this is the day that you made. And so we put a big smile on our face. We rejoice and we're glad in it, Lord. I just pray right now, Lord, that you help me to decrease. Lord, you increase, Lord. Christ up, I'm down, God. It's not about me, Lord. I pray that, that the message that goes forth, Lord, will, 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 will pierce the, the young people's hearts, Father God, and help them and challenge them, Lord, to remember you, Lord Jesus, while they're young. Not to wait until they get old, but to rem remember you now, Lord, while they have strength in their bodies, while they're, they're full of energy, and while they're full of vigor, so that they can do your will, Lord, at a young age. God, we just thank you right now. So, Lord, I just want to rebuke um, distractions, Lord. I just want to um, rebuke, Lord, um, anything that is not like you, Lord, that would attempt to um, take over this service, Lord. It doesn't have any place here, God. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the power to bind things on earth and they'll be bound in heaven. So we just thank you so much for what you're doing um, for the youth here at Zion Grove Baptist Church. We love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Also, um, shout out um, to, to Minister um, Bessie McKinstry, um, who's holding it down um, with the youth here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So, I might ask you to do a few things. I might ask you to raise your hand or something like that, and it's okay. So, I'm going to start out with a question. Um, I want you to do me a favor. Raise your hand if you've ever forgotten something important. Like something important. All right. Both hands. <laughs> I think that's all of us. Um, my mom, she once told me a story. And it's a true story. Um, my aunt, um, not this aunt, but another aunt, went to the store and bought my mom a chicken, a, a frozen chicken. Um, just because, you know, sisters. Sisters, they look out for each other. So she bought my mom a chicken, and she instructed her son to bring said chicken to my mom. And so my cousin, I believe he might have chicken either in the trunk or the back seat and proceeded on his way well guess what yeah yeah he forgot that chicken do you know when he remembered about that chicken yes when he smelled it he's riding around and smells something realizes that it's not him and it's the chicken you know, we, we've all been there at some point. We've all forgotten um, something important. We've all been guilty of it. Um, whether it's something as simple as completing a homework assignment or turning in that homework assignment or studying for a test or forgetting that you got a project due tomorrow and it's like, oh, snaps, it's right here. Or for some of us older people, 
sometimes we just forget to pay a bill. You know, it, it happens to the best of us. But I think that we can probably all agree that there are certain things that we just cannot forget. Like certain things that we can't forget, certain things that we have to remember. Like these things include our name. We, we have to remember our name. Um, we got to remember where we live, you know, we got to be able to get home. Um, we got to remember how to eat. We have to even remember how to use the restroom. Uh, if we're dating someone, you got to remember who you're dating. And if you're married to someone, you got to remember who you're married. Now, look, I know, I know sometimes, you know, we might have things that are going on in our mind that, that inhibit our memory. But you understand the point that I'm trying to make. These are certain things that we cannot forget. These are certain things that we have to remember. And be it the list that I just mentioned was very small. There's one thing that I didn't mention that we have to remember. One thing that I didn't mention that we have to remember that we can't forget, and that is Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? We have to remember Jesus Christ. We have to remember that. And, and being that, that I'm here in Zion Grove on your annual youth day, and the theme of, of the annual youth day is remembering God in our youth, that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to take a look at some young people in the Bible that did just that, that remembered God in their youth. And listen, I don't plan to, to be here before you long because I know how young people can be. I know how the attention span can be. So I'm not going to be before you that long. So if you don't mind, if you have your Bibles or if you have the Bible app on your phone, let's open it up to the book of Daniel. And we're going to look at verse um, chapter 1. We're going to look at verse number 1. Then we're going to read 3 through 9. All right? And when you're there, say amen. And if you don't mind, let's, let's stand up for the reading of the word. I'll read and you follow along. I'm going to be coming from the New King James Version, so my translation might be just a little bit different from yours. I hear a few pages turning. The book of Daniel, chapter 1. We're going to start at the first verse, and then we're going to skip to verse number three and read all the way through verse number nine. And it reads as follows. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. Verse three. Then the king instructed Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles, young men in whom there was no blemish but good looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand, who had the ability to serve in the king's palace and whom they might teach the language and literature of the Chaldeans. Verse number five. And the king appointed for them a daily provision of the king's delicacies and of the wine which he drank and three years of training for them so that at the end of that time they might serve before the king. Now from among those sons of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. To them the chief of the eunuchs gave names. He gave Daniel the name Belteshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. Verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. Amen. Amen. That was Daniel chapter 1, verses 1, then 3 through 9. You may be seated. Now, if you will, let's unpack what's taking place right now. So, yet again, we see God's people, they've been cutting up. Um, we, we see in the Old Testament how God had done so many things for the children of Israel, yet for some reason or another, they would just forget about what God had done for them, forget that God had made a way in the middle of no way, forget that God had caused the Red Sea to be split, forget that God had delivered them from out of their hardships, from out of their bondage. They would forget. And we see the people have forgotten now. And so because of that, the Lord has removed his protective 
hand, his hedge of protection from around them and has allowed the people of Babylon to come in and to sack the city. King Nebi, um, I guess we on a first name basis, I'm going to call him King Nebi. King Nebi has instructed his squad to scoop up young nobles, some handsome people, some handsome cats who have no physical deformities or anything like that. And he instructs them to be indoctrinated in all things Babylonian for a period of three years. Now, the reason for this is because the king wanted to take people from this city and bring them in so that they can go out and spread the Babylonian propaganda. And see, Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebi, he was smart. He knew that it's easier to take over a group of people if he has people within them lobbying for him, vying for him. And so that's what he did. Now, it's similar to, 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 to what's going on in society now. We see the enemy um, doing the same thing. We see some of our favorite celebrities, celebrities like Miley Cyrus, celebrities like Lady Gaga, celebrities like Zoe Saldana, Kerry Washington, even our beloved Oprah Winfrey, um, Beyonce, and Jay-Z endorsing things like homosexuality. Now... Now, some of those people that I just mentioned, they endorse it a little bit more so than the others, but they all endorse it. And so we begin to think, well, hmm, maybe everybody is right. Um, maybe I'm the one that's being closed-minded. Maybe I am being homophobic, homophobic in my thinking. And, and, and besides, what does the Bible really have to say about homosexuality in the first place? Well, I'm here to tell you the Bible has a lot to say about it, but that's for another time. To the Babylonians, um, they were smart. They knew that it's much easier to take control of a people if you have people within that, that group that are, that are saying, hey, it's all right, man. The Babylonians, they're they pretty cool, man. It's not going to be that, that bad um, being under ba Babylonian um, rule. And so we see Daniel. Daniel and his squad, um, whom we know as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. Now, scholars are not exactly sure of the exact age of Daniel and, and Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, um, but they estimate that they were probably in their preteens, their early teens. I see three gentlemen um, sitting in the back. If you guys don't mind, will you stand up for me? Yeah. All right. Let's see, how old are you guys? Let's start with you on the end. 15. 15? How? 15? 13. 13. 15, um, 15, and 13. So, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. All right? Let's see. And I see, I see a, a young man in the orange um, back there. Would you stand up for me? All right? What's your name? Nick. Nick. How old are you, Nick? 16. 16. All right? So that's Daniel right there. That's Daniel right there. So if you will, if you if you look at, at these gentlemen, this is probably what um, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah look look like. So right. you guys can be seated. You guys can be seated. Amen. And so this is probably what they look like. Now imagine, if you will, these young men that we just saw um, stood up. Imagine, if you will, um, them being plucked up uprooted from their homeland and being taken into a strange place. Has anybody ever seen the movie Hunger Games? Anybody ever seen the movie Hunger Games? Actually a good book. Um, in the movie Hunger Games, and I'm not going to spoil it for if you haven't seen it, um, we see um, our main protagonist, Katniss Everdeen, and she has been forced to, to leave her District 12 and go to the capital city. And as she gets on this, this train, it's a fast-moving train, it, it takes her to the capital city. And when she gets off the train, she sees these strange-looking people wearing these strange-looking clothes with this strange fashion and this strange makeup. And it's nothing like she's ever seen. And I imagine that it's probably similar to, to what Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah um, experienced when they were removed from the city of Judah and taken into Babylon for a period of three years to be indoctrinated, to be brainwashed, if you will, to be taught all of the things of the Babylonian culture, to be taught things about the Babylonian culture that 
probably conflicted with their culture. I imagine that it was probably tough and it went against some of the things that their parents had taught them, some of the things that their elders had taught them, some of the things that the deacons and the pastors and the preachers and the Sunday school teachers had probably taught them. Now listen, I'm gonna press the pause button real quick on the youth and this is just for the parents here. Parents, y'all listening to me parents? Y'all listening to me? It is not the sole responsibility of the educators at school, of the, the preachers at the church, of the Sunday school teachers to educate our youth. We, as parents, we have to do our job to solidify some of the things that they are being taught. We have to do our job to reinforce those things that the teachers are teaching them. So if you're not doing that, hey, it's all right, because you got a chance to do it now. We got a fresh new school year. The children are learning arithmetic and things like that, and it's all right for you to get in there and say, okay, what are you learning? Well, let me tell you what this is, and, and to be able to help them. And I know some of that common core curriculum stuff is kind of hard and it's kind of confusing, but hey, do the best that you can, all right? So our youth. Again, the primary teachers shouldn't be the teachers at school, shouldn't be the, the, the teachers here, and it shouldn't be you two. We should be the primary instructors of our youth. All right. Amen. All right, now I'm unpaused and, and now back to our youth. Now, the thing I really like about um, Daniel, Hananiah, and um, Michelle, and Azariah is that despite all of that, despite being taken into a strange new place, despite uh, being taken from their families, taken from their kin folks, um, they don't get a chance to, to eat the things that they used to eat. They don't get a chance to hang around mama and them and, and daddy and them. They're in a strange new place. Yeah. Despite all of that, yeah. all right. they decided to remember God. Amen. They decided to remember God. And I imagine that, that it wasn't easy for them um, to, to, to be in this place, to be taken away from their home. But at the same time, I imagine that it was easy for them to remember God because they had been taught by their parents and they had been studying themselves. The Bible says, study to show ourselves approved, workmen that needed not to be ashamed to rightly divide the word of God. Now, I know that you're back in school and you're going to be studying algebra. Some of you might be studying pre-cal and things like that. You're going to be studying world history, learning about geology, learning about the Bible, building the Black Warrior River and all of that. But we cannot forget to study the word of God. Amen. There's a, a, a secular rapper uh, by the name of Kendrick Lamar. Now, I'm not going to ask you if you know who he is. I know you already know who he is. You're probably ashamed to put your hand up in the air and say you know who he is. But you know who Kendrick Lamar is. And he has this song called DNA. And in that song, he mentions that he has all kinds of stuff in his DNA. But one of the things I did not hear him mention in that song, he did not mention that he had Jesus in his DNA. See, I see Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, and they had God in their DNA. That's how it was easy for them to remember God because it was ingrained inside of them. So youth, do you have the word of God ingrained on the inside of you. Youth, when situations come your way that will attempt to shake your foundation, are you rooted and planted in the word of God? If not, now is the time to remember God while you're young. So what I'm going to do while I'm here, I'm just going to point out a few benefits that we get from remembering God while you're young. One of the benefits that we get from remembering God while we're young is God's favor. We see in verse number nine that Daniel has favor with the people that was in charge of him, with, with, the, with the chief of the eunuchs. If you remember God while you're young, God will give you favor. He will give you favor with your teachers that will help you out if you need a few more points in your class or on your grade to make that be. He will give you favor with the coaches who have the ability to put you in the game, to put you on the court so that you can show what you know. He will even give you favor with the parents of the young women that you're trying to date. You, you got to have favor with the parents. God will give you the favor that you need. And in chapter number two, 
we see Daniel, he interprets a dream for King Nebi. And, and because he remembered God while he was young, because he had the favor of God upon him, God saw that Daniel was promoted. But not only was Daniel promoted, Daniel said, hey, what about my friends? And they were promoted as well. All right, so God, he gives us favor if we remember him while we're young. Uh, we also see that God made provision for the four young men. He made provision for them. And Daniel and the three, they decided not to defile him themselves with the food that was considered unclean. How did they know that food was considered unclean? Because that's what they had been taught and they studied. See, what you may not understand is this is, the, 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 the ancient Hebrew, they had to remember the first five books of the Bible, and they had to memorize that. It had to be all up in their soul, all up in their DNA. So they knew the word. So young people, do you know the word? Are you studying the word? And I pray that at the end of this that you will be challenged. Um, young people, raise your hand if you got a smartphone. If you got an iPhone, if you got an Android phone. All right? So I see some of you raising your hand. All right, if you don't have a smartphone, maybe you might have a tablet. All right, what you need to do if you haven't already, you go to the, the Google Play Store, you go to the App Store, and you type in the word Bible app. And you download that app. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And then what you do is you open up that Bible app, and then you go to Plans, and then you search for Youth. And they have all kinds of plans that are that are garnered to you so that you can understand. So y'all need to do that. Go home and do that. And y'all start reading the Bible. Look, if you're not reading it every day, at least start out by reading it like once a day. You read that plan, all right? So y'all do that so that you'll have the word of God in you. Because I promise, we, we, we heard the scripture um, in Ecclesiastes 12 and 1. It says, remember the the, the God um, during your young days because the time is going to come when, 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 when it's going to get hard, when you're going to have to hang on in there. It's going to get challenging, right? And, and God will be for you in the middle of it if you remember God while you're young. Amen? So God, one of the benefits of remembering God while we're young, God offers protection. We fast forward to chapter number five. King Nebi had a golden statue set up for himself and the decree was this, that everyone had to bow down when the beat dropped. And so when the music started playing, everybody had to bow down. But see, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, their Babylonian names, they knew they knew what the word of God said. They knew that they weren't supposed to, to worship any idols. And so they decided, okay, I'm just going to have to disobey the decree of the king. I know that it's law, but I can't be down with it because it goes against the God I serve. You're going to be faced with some situations that go against the God that you serve. And what are you going to do? You're going to have to know the word of God for yourself so that you can determine, hey, I can't do that. Because that goes against my God. And so they disobeyed what the king had told them to do. And in verse 17, they said, the God that we serve is able to deliver them. How did they know that the God that they serve was able to deliver them? Because they knew what the God that they serve had done for their forefathers. Parents, parents, are we reminding our youth what God has done for us? Are we telling them that, hey, baby, God healed your grandmother from cancer. God delivered me from smoking. Son, my son, don't look at those unclean things. God delivered me from the hand of pornography, and he can deliver you. Are we sharing with our youth parents? Are we sharing our testimonies with our young people? See, they knew that God was able to deliver them. And they said, if God does not deliver them, let it be known, we ain't going to bow down. We're not going to do it. We won't bend. We won't heal. We won't break. And God did deliver them from that furnace. And I remember Nebuchadnezzar looking at us like, hey, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't we throw three people in that furnace? And it looks like I see three people walking around in that furnace, unbound, unshackled, and I see a fourth person in that furnace walking around with the likeness of the Son of God. See what that was? That was 
was a, a, a what's called a, 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 a Christophany, a, 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 a showing of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Because we see Jesus Christ showing up in the Old Testament before the name Jesus was ever mentioned. So Jesus is walking around with Shaq, that Meshach and Abednego and they just kicking it. They don't even smell like smoke. See, God offers protection for those of us that remember God while we are young. And y'all know the story about Daniel when he was in the lion den, how, how God just came in and sent the angel to shut the mouths of the cats, shut the mouths of, of Mufasa and, and Scar and Simba and all the other lions that was hanging out with him. God offers protection when we choose to remember God when we're young. Amen? See, that's just a few of the benefits that we will receive when we remember God while we're young, when we remember God as, as we're young. Youth, I know that you're probably thinking this, Zion Grove youth and the, and the peers, you're probably thinking, well, hey, look, I'm young, I got a lot to do, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wait till I get a little bit older um, to remember God. I'm just gonna think about all that stuff when I get a little bit older. When I get probably like in my 30s, then I'm gonna serve God with all of my heart. I'm here to tell you that tomorrow is not guaranteed. We live in a different kind of world where things happen and sadly you die at a young age. We're not guaranteed to get old and die in our bed um, surrounded by our loved ones. That doesn't happen anymore. I remember that when I was younger, I would tell my mom, mom, I'm gonna go exploring. And I'm like in the fifth or sixth grade and I would get on my bike and I would just ride like five or six miles from my house, just be all in different neighborhoods, looking at the houses and things like that, rolling around like I'm Dora the Explorer's cousin, Diego or something like that. And I wouldn't dare let my children do that now. I have, I have, I have two girls that are that are teenagers. I wouldn't dare just let them just wander around now because times are so much different uh, than they were when I was a young um, little lad coming up. But see, there's no way that I would let my children do that because there's so much going on. We hear so much in the news now, and that should even be a furthermore proof of the fact that we need to remember God while we're young. I see you. I see beautiful young men and, and handsome young men and beautiful young ladies that look like you're filled with so much energy. Now is the time to serve God with all of your heart. Now is the time to press forward, to go after him. Now is the time to be like Daniel. The Bible has declared that you are the head and not the tail. The Bible has declared that you are a royal priesthood. The Bible has declared that you are a holy nation. The Bible has declared that you are a peculiar people. So it's time for you to stand out. It's time for you to step out and be the leaders that God has called you to be as you walk through such a Houston County High, as you walk through Eccles, as you walk through Riverside, as you walk through Flatwoods, as you walk through Crestmont Elementary, God has called you to be set apart, to be different. It's all right to be different. See, see, we know that it wasn't just Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel that, 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 that were brought um, from out of Judah into Babylon. It was a bunch of other youth. But see, those are the only ones that the Bible records because those are the only ones that decided to stand out. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, my, my four young men that I had stand up earlier, are you going to be different? Are you going to be set apart? Are you going to be the leaders that God has called you to be? Are you going to lead and not follow? I hope so. I hope so. I, I read an article last year that, that talked about this. It, it mentioned that um, young people, that if they don't accept Jesus Christ by the time of age 15, they're less likely to do so as they're an, an adult. And so that's why it's important for you to remember God while you're young. And when I, when I, say, when I say remember God, I don't just mean just like, yeah, I know who God is. No, I mean that you remember him. See, if you have learned algebra, 
you will remember it because you first learned it. Now, you can't remember trigonometry if you haven't learned trigonometry, or you can't remember um, all 50 states, the name of the 50 states, if you haven't learned them. And so you have to first learn about God, learn about all things Jesus Christ to remember him in the first place. When we say remember him while we're young, we mean to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, to know who he is, to, to walk with him, to talk with him, to live a life that Jesus Christ is pleased with. That's what we mean. That's what it looks like to remember God while we're young. Now the opposite of that is this. We see in 2 Chronicles um, chapter 22, it mentions King Josiah. King Josiah was a young king. He became king when he was seven years old. And he was like some of us. Uh, he went to church. He served on the usher board. He sung in the choir and, and things like that. But he didn't really know God uh, for himself. He only did what was right in the sight of God while the chief priest was alive. But we fast forward to verse number 18. We see Joash. I'm sorry, not Josiah. I meant to say Joash. We see Joash. Um, Josiah was a child king as well. But we see Joash turn away from God when the chief priest dies. Why did he do that? Why did he turn away from God when the chief priest died? He turned away from God because he didn't really know him for itself. He didn't really remember God while he was young. So let's not be like Joash. Let's be like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah and remember God when we're young. Can I get an amen? As I close, I want you to imagine a world where we all remember Jesus in the days of our youth, where we all serve him while we're still young. I want you to imagine a world like that. If it was a world like that where we all serve God while we're still young, there would not be so much evil in the world. Sadly, I was uh, reading the news the other day, um, and I saw where this um, white supremacist group um, in Carolina um, had, had had their little rally so that they could get around and just hate. And, and people were protesting that hate. Well, one of the white supremacists thought it'd be a good idea to get in his um, Dodge um, Charger and just drive into those people. And he killed one 32-year-old young lady. And a lot of other ones were injured. And two police officers on their way in a helicopter to respond to the violence that was taking place, they had an accident and they died. Yeah. If we all remembered God while we were young, yeah. we wouldn't have to worry about things like that. Yeah. Let's pray. All hearts and minds clear. God, I thank you right now. That all of the youth within the sound of my ear, all of the youth within an earshot, they have decided that they are going to remember God while they're young. And Lord, we thank you that you're the God of the first, second, third, fourth, and infinity amount of chances. If they hadn't been remembering you while they're young, they're going to start to do so now. They're going to get in the Word, and they're going to study to show themselves approved. They're going to pay attention during church service, and they're going to decide that they're going to be like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, that they're going to be set apart, and they are going to remember you while they're young. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So my older youth, I have um, I brought some books um, for my middle schoolers up to high school. I'm going to leave them with uh, Miss Bessie McKinney. What I want you to do there is it's a small book. I want you to take two of them. I want you to read one of those books. At the, at the back of that has the Gospel of John. It's a beautiful gospel about Jesus Christ. And the beginning of it has some knowledge about God. And so you can start there um, to, to get in that so that you will be able to remember God when you're young. Then what I want you to do, I want you to take those two books that I gave you, give one of them to a close friend, and then I want you to give the other one to somebody that you don't really know that well. That's my challenge for you. I love you so much. Thank you for having me. Let us know that tomorrow.
tomorrow is not promised. But he also let us know that God will go in with you. God used young people. So at this time, we want to open the doors of the church. We want to open the doors of the church. We want to put out a special plea for the young people today. He told us statistics say once you reach the age of 15, the statistics say you're less likely to know Christ. We want to make a plea while you're young. But the door stands open for everybody. But we want to make a special plea. We're going to, no, we're going to, we're going to make a special plea for everyone right now. The doors are open. Will there be one? Will there be one? You ought to come. You ought to come right now. I believe there's somebody out there that don't know him. I believe there's somebody that needs to recommit their life right now. Don't worry about how old you are. Will you come today? Will that be one? Tomorrow is not promised. Preach the good word. Preach the good word. He made it plain.
continue to fellowship. We're so proud to have had this young man. It, it takes a bold young man to accept his calling at such a young age. When you got the world out there, so many temptations. And, and when you hear the voice of God and you accept it, we dare not close without giving his mom the opportunity to, if she have anything that she want to say. Mom, you got... God knows all, but Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. for my son. Yeah. Oh God, I'm so proud of you. Yeah. Yeah. I think his head just got a little bigger. Good job, good job. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. My mom's here, my dad's here, amen. We recognize them as well. The first give uh, instructions for the kitchen, then we're going to call the preacher back, ask him to bless the food, and give us benediction. Amen. If you was blessed, let me let me hear you. Uh, the work of the young people as well as the old. Amen. The uh, kitchen ministry want us. Amen. Want the grown folks to come first. If you're grown, you know who you are. You go first, then we want the peer and the youth ministry to go next. Since this is their day, then the rest follow. Be mindful, amen, that we have another church coming. They want to eat too. Amen. We're going to save them something. Amen. So we want to eat. They're going to be here. Uh, the program starts at 3, so they'll be here in time to eat. So we want to eat and uh, give the kitchen time to clean up, amen, so that uh, they can come in and enjoy their meal. Now we're going to ask the preacher, uh, Reverend Mitchell, if he'll come back, uh, bless the food, any closing remarks that he have, and give us the benediction. Amen? Amen. Again, I just want to say that it's a privilege and an honor to be able to be here and um, hang out um, with young people. Amen. I will say this, man. Please remember God while you're young. You, you don't have to wait till you get older. There's so many people in your schools that don't even go to church, that don't even know Jesus. And if you start living your life in such a way, um, they'll be attracted to that. They won't know that they're attracted to Jesus, but then they'll be drawn to you. And then it'll be your opportunity to, to share Jesus with them. You ain't got to be like, praise the Lord, hallelujah. You know, you ain't got to do all that. But if you just show, show God to them, um, by your lifestyle. That's all you got to do. And so I see some leaders here, man. You know, I see some some governors. I see some senators. I see some doctors. I see some, some lawyers here. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength, all right? And I want to tell you this. I want to tell you this. The Bible says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That you were formed in your mother's womb and, and God knew you before that. And I want to tell you, it doesn't matter what the people say about you. The people might say that you're this way. The people might say that you're that way. It only matters what God has said about you. So get in the word. Start learning what our creator has said about you. All right? I love y'all. So I'm going to bless the food with all. God, we just thank you, Lord, for the food um, that we're about to receive, um, some tacos and whatnot, God, and we just thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, that it'll be um, nutritious for our bodies, Lord, and we thank you that it's good and it'll digest properly, Lord. Um, we ask a special blessing upon the hands that prepared it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. I want to say this. Um, Hug a neighbor, tell somebody that they look good, and in doing that, um, you're dismissed. Have a blessed day. May God be with you. Amen.